Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Before we get any further into this video, I want to add an immediate disclaimer. If the title already did not make it obvious, yes, this video will have spoilers. I will be discussing in detail the endings and culprits of the following 10 Nancy Drew games. This video does have spoilers. You have been warned. Now, let's get started with today's video. A couple weeks ago, I got to be snarky wizard kitten and rank the top 10 worst culprits and endings in the Nancy Drew series. I'll link that video in a card in the upper corner of the screen here. While I certainly enjoy getting the chance to be a bit sassy, I also love talking about the triumphs of the Nancy Drew games because honestly, there's a lot of greatness to discuss. The large majority of the Nancy Drew games are truly fantastic mysteries, and I believe that the main reason this is true is because most of the games have well-developed culprits and exciting endings. The success of a mystery is heavily reliant on how well the ending is executed because, really, the whole point of a mystery is to keep us guessing until the very end while still leaving enough clues along the way that we could conceivably uncover the answers if we were clever enough. This is why I personally love mysteries. They're invigorating and challenging. And just like when I ranked the worst endings, I noticed a pattern when I was ranking my best endings. A lot of the endings and culprits that I believe to be the best are also some of my favorite games. But to keep things objective, please allow me to review my criteria for this ranking. First, a good ending must have a good culprit. This entails having a clear motive and the means and opportunity to commit the crime. A good culprit should also have a fully developed backstory and be surprising without being unbelievable. The reveal of the culprit should also be really fun. There should definitely be some intensity. Second, a good ending needs to have solid writing. If the mystery did its job, then the reveal at the end should be one that could have been intuited based on the clues that were discovered within the game. The villain's speech should be well written, and the overall structure of the ending needs to work. In other words, there should be a sensical order to things unfolding. Third, and finally, a good ending needs to have a good ending puzzle. A good end puzzle should enhance both the culprit and the writing, not detract from them. We should be able to solve the end puzzle fast enough so that the momentum and adrenaline of the ending is not hampered, but there should still be a reasonable enough challenge that we feel victorious and like we actually accomplished something. I have scored each game based on these three categories with a parameter of three stars each. This means that a game that receives nine stars total would have a perfect ending with subtractions of stars indicating flaws in the ending. In the case of a tie, I prioritize a good culprit first, then good writing, and finally, a solid end puzzle. Some ties will inevitably need to be broken by my personal preference, but so be it. One last final spoiler warning. I hope it goes without saying, but yes, this game does have detailed spoilers for the endings and culprits of the following games. You have been warned a second time. But now, without further ado, let's get to ranking. Number 10, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. 
This is one of the most successful games in the series overall, and is very frequently ranked by fellow detectives as one of the best or, at the very least, a personal favorite. I certainly agree with this sentiment, though I do also believe that the ending could have been a little more perfect. I do still think the ending is good enough to make this list, but let's analyze a bit more. The most successful part of this ending, and the reason it snuck into the top 10, was the end puzzle. Nancy must find her way through spooky caverns and logic out all of the clues that Jake Hurley left behind in order to find his valuable treasure, aka a letter written by Abraham Lincoln on the day of his assassination. The culprit, good old Laurie Gerard, then manages to kick down the support beams that were giving the cavern structural integrity. And the only way out is a super fun and hilarious mine cart ride. It's like Nancy's own personal roller coaster, and it is epic. I always have so much fun with this puzzle, and it's a unique way to end a Nancy Drew game. It doesn't require a ton of thought on the detective's part, but it's just so entertaining that it gets two stars. The culprit and the writing, however, don't fare as well in my opinion. They certainly are not bad, but I can only give each one star. The mystery in this game essentially comes down to finding Jake and his lost treasure, not uncovering a culprit. The game still gives us a culprit when Lori decides to keep the treasure for herself and casually kicks in the walls in an attempt to murder Nancy for fake publicity. While this is a really cool idea, it wasn't foreshadowed in any way during the mystery itself, and we therefore could not have seen it coming. While we do see examples of Lori being willing to do basically anything for publicity, we couldn't have foreseen these exact circumstances. Additionally, the ending, at least in a way, ends up leaning more on exposition dump than actual uncovering of clues, so it's not perfect in my mind. Still though, this is a great ending, and shoving Lori into a mud puddle at the end is all my vengeful little heart desires in life. Number 9, Curse of Blackmore Manor. When I first played this game and got to the end, I'll admit that I was flummoxed when little Jane Penvalin waltzed up behind me and was like, hey, that big rock is mine. When I looked back on it though, the clues were there for me to suspect Jane. From the guinea pig hair serum to all the fabricated stories about the lady in black. I'm only going to give Jane two stars though as a culprit, because ultimately, she's hardly intimidating. Her motive of wanting to deeply upset Linda by making her think that she was a werewolf is pretty twisted, but doesn't necessarily have as much emotional heft as other, more dangerous possibilities. It works, but Jane's not the most flawless of culprits, so two stars here. The end writing and puzzles, however, are just okay. Moving Aeolus over to lift the box takes some thinking on our part, but beyond that, we really don't do much. It's just a bit too simple in my book. Similarly, the writing serves its purpose in allowing Jane to snarkily demand the treasure, explain why she deserves it, and ultimately fill in a couple of holes that we didn't yet know. It does the job, but is just a bit too simple and ultimately not mind-blowing. Overall though, this ending is pleasant, wraps things up really nicely, and is quite entertaining. Number 8, Warnings at Waverly Academy. This game just so happens to be my personal favorite, and I think the ending certainly plays a role in that. The ending writing is where this game is really successful, in my opinion. All the clues in this mystery are laid out beautifully, resulting in a conclusion that feels complete, meaningful, and clear. 
Nancy runs into Corrine in a secret room discovered in the cellar of Ramsey Hall, after finally figuring out all of Rita Hollowell's secrets. Corrine reveals that Rita's secret treasure was a book of unpublished works by Edgar Allan Poe, which Corrine knew about because of her intensive research. All the breadcrumbs were there for this reveal, and the end sequence where Mel helps us save the day is absolute gold. You just entered my room through the wall. I demand an explanation. Truly spectacular and three stars worthy for sure. I have to objectively give the end puzzle and culprit, however, one star each. Corrine crafted an incredibly clever plan, but her motive and her opportunity for being the black cat aren't really clarified until the end. It certainly makes sense that she would use the information that she uncovered to unconsciously lash out and best all of the people who were cruel to her. But most of the other girls in Ramsey Hall also had pretty convincing motives as well, so she doesn't fully stand out in this way. The end puzzle is also just okay. I love the danger of a giant freaking axe swinging down from the ceiling and threatening to chop Nancy's poor little head off, but the actual way that we get out of the cellar is just a standard puzzle and nothing too exciting. Still though, this ending will always have a special place in my heart, primarily because Mel is our queen and we adore her. Number seven, Ghost of Thornton Hall. This is the first and only modern Nancy Drew mystery to make this list. The modern Nancy Drew mysteries really struggle with endings as a whole, something that I elaborated on quite a bit in my rankings of the worst endings. Ghost of Thornton Hall, however, makes this list because it has a really well done culprit. Clara Thornton is a three-star culprit in my opinion. We learn throughout the mystery about her contentious relationship with her family. We see hints of the dark side of her personality throughout the game. The way she talks to Nancy is often extremely fraught and emotional, very sus, and her motive ends up becoming extremely clear through all of this. She is intimidating and her backstory is fully fleshed out, but she also wasn't obvious, which I personally consider another problem a lot of the modern culprits have. There were still clues to uncover along the way. I can only give the end puzzle one star, because it's essentially a puzzle we've already completed in the game before, and therefore doesn't require a great deal of work on our part. Though I do appreciate that we have to intuit that the secret passageway is the only way out of the locked and extremely haunted room. Additionally, the end writing is succinct and to the point. There isn't a whole ton of back and forth dialogue between Nancy and Clara, though I do certainly appreciate Clara's quote unquote conversation with Charlotte, where she desperately admits her guilt and says that she deserves death. Given the weightiness and darkness of this whole game, I wanted a bit more from the ending writing itself, so one star it is. Regardless though, this ending is truly powerful, and the three different choices also gives it a really unique touch. Number six, The Haunted Carousel. I was kind of surprised when I realized how high up on this list I ended up placing The Haunted Carousel. But hey, this game has a really solid ending starting with another three-star culprit, Elliot Chen. What impresses me the most about Elliot as a culprit is just how flawlessly the clues were laid out for his motive, means, and opportunity. We're told the whole game that Elliot is just a huge procrastinator, and that's why he's so behind on his work. Elliot also plays into this lie to throw us off his scent. But then, we find the receipt for a huge order of wood used to make carousel horses, and books and magazines in his office about carousel horse construction. The plot thickens. And beyond that, Elliot is super creepy when Nancy confronts him, 
Seriously, shivers. He's an excellent culprit, and I think the end writing is solid as well. I give the writing two stars, because our conversation with Elliot reveals compelling information, but in an exposition dump kind of way, and has so many memorable lines and moments. Whacking Elliot in the face with a sign so that he plummets down a trapdoor is truly a hilarious way to defeat a culprit, and I simply love it. I can ultimately only give the end puzzle one star, because while I do appreciate a good run from the culprit moment, we really only need to do one thing to thwart the villain, and it involves interacting with the only interactable item in the room sort of a la treasure in the royal tower. Very satisfying, but also very simple. No matter what though, this ending has a lot going for it, and it definitely deserves to be on this list. Number 5. Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake the top five endings on this list are all endings that I have lauded on this channel before, and Ghost Dogs is certainly no exception. I adore this ending, starting with the culprit, Emily Griffin. Emily is deflecting suspicion away from her the entire game, but eagle-eyed detectives will note her disregard for rules, her lust for treasure, and her willingness to do whatever it takes to get the goods. Once we realize there's a treasure somewhere on Sally's property, and once we find the hidden room within the tunnels with the faux ghost dogs, everything falls into place. And then we have an absolutely amazing and spine-chilling encounter with Emily, in which she chases Nancy with a giant dog bone, threatening to kill her and being all like, oh, don't worry, we can split the treasure, Nancy. I'm not gonna hurt ya. I'm just gonna bash your brains in all of the shining with my giant bone weapon. She's so scary. She's so well set up. She's a brilliant culprit. I objectively have to give the final puzzle and the end writing two stars each. Our conversations with Emily are incredibly memorable and her words will be seared into my brain for my entire life. But the conversations are admittedly pretty one-sided and not terribly substantive. Two stars worthy. The puzzle is extremely fun because, with adrenaline pumping, Nancy needs to navigate her way out without running into the bone wielder herself. And when you're nervous, it's shockingly easy to do so. There aren't so many steps that it's a flawless puzzle, but enough that it is absolutely successful and deserving of two stars. I love this ending. Number four, The Secret of Shadow Ranch. Here's Shorty. Ah, it's just so good. You know what I'm going to say, right? Shorty Thurmond is a three-star culprit, hands down. This creeper is so good at weaseling his way into our hearts throughout the whole mystery. He's just a friendly gossip. He's just a misunderstood chef. He's harmless enough. But when we snoop through his stuff and he catches us, the air changes. We get a glimpse of Shorty's dangerous side, and when we finally make it to the ending, that side comes out in full force. Shorty's motive is clear by the end, and could have been deduced from the start, but his friendly manner and distraction tactics are so effective that he becomes such a well-developed villain. I think the writing at the end is also quite effective. Shorty reveals just enough to Nancy when he sees us at the top of the cliffs. All of the lines that he shouts to us when he's coming to get us are so scary. And his pleading at the end when he is bested is massively funny. It's all a bit too simple to earn three stars, but definitely enough to get two. The end puzzle similarly earns two stars. The idea of switching the rocks to confuse Shorty is brilliant, 
but I also love that Nancy can try different things that just don't work. It's a relatively quick and simple puzzle, but it's designed so well. This is another amazing ending. Number three, stay tuned for danger. Let's get the one star puzzle out of the way first so I can gush about everything else. Escaping from the room essentially requires a simple memory puzzle. It's quick, it's easy, it does the job, but it's nothing too terribly special. The culprit and the writing, however, are terribly special, and both earn three stars each. Dwayne Powers is easily one of the most terrifying culprits in the entire series. This man has lost all of his marbles, is completely disconnected from reality, and is willing to do whatever it takes to exact his revenge. It is clear from the first time that we meet Dwayne that he is unstable. Our conversations with him and the clues that we find in his office fully support his backstory. As a man who felt so deeply underappreciated and betrayed that causing pain and even death to those who he believed wronged him actually felt like a reasonable step in his mind. It's so scary and so well developed. Ah, the writing. The writing also does 100% justice to Dwayne. He has a brilliant villain speech that he delivers from the sound booth, and this gets me every time, he's so twisted that the man adds sound effects to his own villain speech, and they're effective. The venom and hate in his words, coupled with the words themselves, make this ending truly spectacular. Seriously, so much to love. Number two, the final scene. This was my first ever completed Nancy Drew game, and it is not an exaggeration for me to say that the ending of this game is what made me fall in love with Nancy Drew games to the extent that I have. You can honestly thank this ending for this and all of my other videos. The only thing that I don't think is quite perfect in this ending is the writing. It still deserves two stars, because the conversation between Nancy and Joseph is so terrifying and heartbreaking and ultimately just incredibly effective. It is, however, a bit stilted and repetitive in that Joseph tends to say some of the same things repeatedly. And in such a heated, time-sensitive situation, there wouldn't necessarily be as many pauses as there end up being. Everything else, though? Perfection. Joseph is an amazing culprit because he spends the entire game getting us to genuinely trust him. Joseph's on our side. He cares about us. He's kind, he's sweet, he's a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuffs don't kidnap people. But when we learn about all of the loss that Joseph is experiencing and his complete separation from reality, both through clues from the game and from the ending itself, wow. Everything becomes clear in the most beautiful and heartbreaking ways. His backstory is so deep and carries so much power. The end puzzle is also three stars perfection. First of all, I think more endings should have visible time limits because holy bobbles does that add to the suspense. Beyond that, Nancy needs to find a secret passageway that she literally has never seen before. Unlock a safe, Read the extremely interesting documents in the safe, but at the expense of time, which feels so realistic. Find the right key for the door. Find Maya locked behind glass. Optionally try to break Maya out with a sledgehammer. Find her way to the marquee switch, and then outsmart Joseph with an item we've had in our inventory the entire game, but not yet had to use. 
It's literally genius. And I wish all endings were like this. World's biggest chef kiss. Number one, finally, Danger on Deception Island. This venerable ending earned three stars in all three categories, and for good reason. This ending, in my opinion, is what literally every mystery ending should aspire to. First things first, we have a great culprit. Andy Jason seems so harmless for the majority of the mystery. He's a nice guy, owns a cute little museum, fights for the whales, whales rule, and is generally just pretty chill. But literally one of the very first clues we find in the game is his business card beneath Katie Firestone's vandalized sink. Coincidence? I think not! We then learn through the entirety of the game about the competition between Andy and Katie, the whole sunken treasure and smuggling subplot, and the highly trained orca. Nancy still doesn't get it when she goes to Andy asking for help and is convinced that Katie is up to no good, even though Andy was the one who stole her gloves. Genius. So then we get to the boat and Andy is still playing Mr. Nice Guy. We have this awesome puzzle where we sneak around the ship to get below deck and overhear excellent writing explaining naturally and effortlessly a couple of tidbits we didn't yet know. And then we find Katie, who we've been suspecting, tied up and gagged. She warns us, we hide, we run, and then, and then we thwart Andy by throwing an air tank into the pool with the orca. And Andy is all like, why did you do that, dummy? And then the orca tosses it at him and knocks him unconscious in the most hilarious way ever. That's why I did that, Andy. That's why. It's literally brilliant. The writing, the puzzle, the build-up to Andy being the culprit, the humor, the organization, everything is flawless. So, there you have it, fellow detectives. My ranking of the 10 best Nancy Drew endings and culprits. But what do you think? Do you agree with my list and think that these culprits and endings are the best? Which games do you think I missed? What are your thoughts on what makes a good culprit and ending? Let a wizard kitten know down in the comments. I think it's interesting to note that six of the mysteries that made this list were from the first 10 games in the series, and eight of the mysteries on this list were from the first half of the series. I firmly believe that the earlier games in the series are, at least for the most part, superior in terms of plot development and storytelling. A big part of this comes down to the scripts, but it also comes down to priorities. The early mysteries focused on telling really good stories and crafting compelling mysteries. It just goes to show that fancy schmancy graphics don't always make for good games. Really, it comes down to prioritizing the story that you want to tell and finding nuanced ways to make things interesting, especially when it comes to your story's culprit and reveal at least in my mind. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, fellow detectives. I do hope that you enjoyed it. As always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.